Hey folks, so in today's video we're going to look at the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8 art on the 90D alongside the Sigma 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 art on the 90D. Both these cameras or both of these lenses are going to be looked at on the 90D and we're going to compare them how they function all on the 90D only. Okay, this is actually a special request from a viewer. So Let's get started. So one of the great things about the 14 to 24 millimeter on the 90D specifically is that you don't get that distortion that you might on a full frame camera because it is a crop sensor. So as you can see here on the outer edges at 14 millimeters, uh, it's extremely sharp. This is the actual distance I'm away from the pond. So as you can see, it, it looks like I'm way back, but in reality, I'm only about 10 feet away from the front edge of that pond, as you can see here. It's a great lens for tight spaces. So now switching over to the 18 to 35, if you look, the image is almost indistinguishable. They look so similar. The, obviously the main difference there is just the focal distance. So, so this is an example of why I love this lens on the 90D. Look at the distortion on the corners here. It's such a wide angle and you're getting minimal distortion and you can see here, so look. Yeah, there's a tiny bit, but I'm telling you, on a full-frame camera, that distortion is enormous. That's one of the things I love about it. Look how close I am. That's how far away the camera is, and look how wide of a shot you still get on a crop sensor. Now we're at the widest here at 14 millimeter. Let's see how it looks at the 24 millimeter. As you can see here, it cleans it up even more on the corners. Zero distortion here, and it's just a beautiful image all the way around. Uh, Sigma lenses are just absolutely beautiful images I love Sigma lenses this the 18 the 35 uh, the 35 f 1.4 I just get fantastic images from them here's the 18 to 35 and again you might you probably couldn't even tell the difference here if I didn't tell you we just switch lenses let's switch spots here this is just a neat little area I found here but I wanted to show the 18 to 35 here and then zoom in on it and for a reference point here's a photo of how far away I am of it and by the way, these photos here I took on my Samsung S21 Ultra. So anyways, so back to the 14 to 24 f2.8. Again, another situation where you can barely tell that I switched until I zoom out. And now you get that huge wide angle and it, you know, corner to corner sharpness, very low distortion. I can't, I can't stress that enough how small the distortion is on the corner, on the edges. Because on a full frame, that distortion gets massive. Even though they say it, it's not, but I, I'm telling you. On the R6, for example, even in 4K, that uh, yeah, it's sharp, but it's so distorted that it's it's almost unusable in some situations. Now here, both of these now are going to be at 18. I'm going to switch. There you go. I just switched in lenses there. You could barely tell other than the little judder because they're not exactly 18. Maybe I didn't have it lined up right on the 24, but as you saw there, almost indistinguishable. Now here are just a bunch of uh, different samples with the... Uh, mostly the 14 to 24 just because it's such a beautiful day out this park is just starting to come into bloom and all the flowers are starting to bloom and it's in a couple of weeks this park's gonna look amazing but just wanted to show this one of the thing you, that I I have to point out here is that bulbous front on the 14 to 24 catches the Sun in Sun flare a lot uh, there's not really anything you could do about that uh, maybe get some external type of block or something but it's just it's so big and protrudes so far that it does catch the sun I'll show you here in a second but first let's just keep going back and forth here between these two and at this point I think I've shown enough that it they're really in image quality there there is really no difference they pick up the colors beautifully the contrast pretty much everything you'd expect from a Sigma lens well art series lens I should say all right so let's switch spots here this is the distance that you're going to see here and look how far away I look and then look here at the top that's that sun flare I'm talking about it catches it sometimes and, and it's just random you just it's hard to predict when it's gonna show up in your shot too All right, let's look at some photos now if you look on the left uh, these are just some photos I wanted to take and just show that really there's not a big difference between the shots uh, with the exception of the fact that the the 35 millimeter, the, the 18 to 35 millimeter at 35 millimeters on the 90D, especially if you're using live view with that eye tracking, is an excellent 
portrait lens and camera combination. So I say live view because in the viewfinder, the 18 to 35, even calibrated, still has times where it misses. Now, the good news about the calibrating, I didn't get into that, but the 18 to 35 does need to be calibrated for the viewfinder, does not need to be calibrated for the live view mode, which is awesome. That's why I say it's a great combination for portraits, and especially the eye detection. However, the 14 to 24 needed zero calibration. That thing came ready to go. I didn't have to mess with that at all, and I was so thankful, you know? And it, granted, it did cost double the price, but it's just, you know, such a unique lens and in, in everything that it, I was so happy that I didn't have to mess with that. But that's it. Uh, if you got anything to say or add, please feel free in the comments, and, uh, you know, have a fantastic day.